All right, so quick overview of the downswing on RST and what it's really all about and what we're going to teach you how to do to hit the ball a long ways with as little effort as humanly possible. In fact, that's the most common thing that I hear every day in lessons is, I don't feel like I did anything. It doesn't feel like I, I'm working hard enough to hit the ball very far. And that's because we're extremely efficient in our movements with RST. And we look at very heavily the physics involved in, the, in what's moving the club and what's creating leverage and speed and rotation and all these things in the swing so that we can create a lot of speed with very little muscular effort. And the big key to that is the swing has to be big body movement, big muscle movement driven rather than what most every single other golfer on the planet does is they focus on moving the club with their arms and their hands and their shoulders. When you swing from here up, your golf swing will be immediately capped. You'll never be able to swing, which most people get stuck at, at a, faster than about 92 miles an hour. You simply don't have enough muscle mass to create enough horsepower to move the club more than about 92 miles an hour with the driver. And that's why most every amateur on the planet is stuck at that speed. They never get past the triple digit number. But my students with the RST are going to be well over 110 miles an hour when they follow these movements the way that we prescribe them because it's incredibly efficient to do so. You'll be shocked how much speed you can pick up with how little effort you have to put into the swing. And again, it all starts with the big muscle movements. And then the downs, we're, we've obviously, we've talked about the backswing and the takeaway movements. It's all big body movement. We're not really even worrying about what our arms or hands are doing. They're being moved by the body. The downswing is especially true of that. What we're gonna do in the downswing is we're gonna really focus on big muscle movement because we're trying to recruit muscle fiber in a specific sequence. You need muscle fibers to be loaded in order to move that club fast. It's that simple. It's all about, it comes down to an economy of scale when it comes down to muscle movement. Once you're firing with your arms and shoulders, you've only got so much muscle up here. And even if you're a bodybuilder, you're not gonna be able to recruit enough pounds of muscle to swing the club faster than about 90, 92 miles an hour. How much muscle mass does it take? To swing over 100 miles an hour, it's about 32 pounds of muscle. I don't know about you, I don't have 32 pounds of muscle up here in my arms and shoulders. I definitely don't have it in my forearms. So pushing against the shaft and holding onto the club really tight, it's the most inefficient way to swing the club. But I do have 32 pounds of muscle when I use the muscles in my, my butt, my glutes, my quads, my hamstrings, and my back. I've got lots of muscle relatively when I put all that together in the right sequence that it's very easy for me to swing over 100 miles an hour. So, and you're going to be able to do it too as you start understanding all these movement patterns. So, the first thing from the top of the swing, actually I'm going to do it without my arms again because we don't need to worry about the club, right? We're focused on big motor movement, so we take our club and our arms out of it. And the first thing I'm going to do here is what? Shift my weight. That helps change the direction the club is moving this way to start going the other way without me doing it with tightening up my arms and hands. The club's got momentum. It's being swung back here relatively quickly, and now you're asking it to change directions and start going this way. Well, I can take my grip and tighten up and start making the club go this way, but of course that's gonna cause me to cast it. So that's the last thing that I wanna do. So as I start down, what I'm trying to do is shift my weight, use this big muscle mass, and that's what's moving the club, and my hands and arms can stay relatively relaxed. And as I do that, I've now created some momentum going this way. And as I start to rotate my pelvis this way, again, I'll take the club out. Now, all of a sudden, the club has been moved about seven feet in the downswing without me doing anything with my arms or hands or shoulders. So now, as I start down and shift my weight, look where the club is. I'm literally trying, like I said in the RST overview, to do nothing with my shoulders. I'm not trying to turn them at all. If anything, I'm trying to imagine that I'm doing the opposite. I'm, I'm not trying to do really anything with them. But as I start down, I'm just letting them relax. And you'll notice as I do this, and I'm just focusing on the big muscle movements of my trunk and my core, the club is brought down all the way into the hitting area without me doing anything. So now all I have to do is post up, and that is what snaps the release of the club not me doing anything with my arms or hands at all. The big key focus that you're gonna learn as you start going through all these videos is that you're gonna focus on shifting your weight, rotating, and posting up. That's the whole movement. Not try and do something with your hands or try and drop the club down on plane or any of that stuff. 
Watch what happens to the club if I just focus on what I told you. I'm going to shift my weight, turn my hips, and post up. Watch what happens to the golf club. I go to the top. Arms are where I want them. I didn't have to do anything. Shift my weight, rotate my hips, post up. The club fell down on plane, and as I post up, it would get into a perfect impact position again without me doing anything with my arms or hands. They're staying soft, they're staying in reserve so that they have speed to release. When your arms and hands and muscles get really tight, you can't move them very fast. I mean, tighten yourself up here and try to move as fast as you can. You just simply can't. From here up, you're gonna feel very relaxed in the rotary swing and you're not gonna feel like you're putting any effort into the swing and that's gonna be the hardest mental hurdle for you to overcome when you start building a tour caliber golf swing like the rotary swing tour is. In fact, more tour pros use the RST fundamentals than any other swing method out there because these are based on fact, they're based on science. Now they may use all kinds of different variables of RST and look a little bit different, but when it comes down to the fundamentals of how you move your body, the sequence that you do it, the impact positions that you achieve, how you use lag and leverage for speed, every single tour pro uses these fundamentals or they wouldn't be a tour pro. So I get asked all the time, you know, which tour pro is, you know, uses RST? Well, they all do or they wouldn't be out there. They have to have these basic scientific principles in their golf swing or the ball's not gonna go anywhere and it's not gonna go anywhere very consistently. So as you start learning this stuff, there's lots of different things. You'll see we've done lots of tour pro reviews on the swing where we point out what the RST fundamentals that they're using are so that you can start kind of picking these things out for yourself and learning you know, through observation of other great players what you need to do in your swing. And what you're gonna find is that they all follow these fundamentals in the downswing. They shift their weight, they rotate their pelvis, they keep their arms and hands relaxed, relatively relaxed, and they post up on this leg to release the leverage that they have in their swing. You don't see any tour pros cast in the club. That's all this right side dominant movement that we talk about a lot on the website. So you'll, as you'll keep learning this stuff, you'll see that you're going to develop a, literally a tour caliber or better, because I mentioned in the overview, most of these guys get injured because they're ignoring some of the key fundamentals of RST. You can play golf injury free, hit the ball further than you ever have, and be more consistent as you keep going through these videos and learning the RST fundamentals.